New year, same show, same us. Welcome into the first Devils in Detail of 2019. To my left is Ethan Schmidt, I'm Carson Field, and we have a lot of great stuff coming at you to start the new year. Hope you're attacking those New Year's resolutions, sir. Lots of ASU athletics going on right now. We will break down men's and women's basketball. Men's ice hockey is having its best season ever. Herm Edwards has put in work on the recruiting trail and much more coming your way. To start, I am joined by the man, the myth, Trevor Booth. Trevor, it's been too long. It really has, Carson. It's been a long break, but now I'm glad and we can talk some more basketball together. Yeah, absolutely. After a marquee win against Kansas, things haven't gone so well for ASU basketball. The Sun Devils have dropped three of their last five and are 2-2 two two in Pac-12 play. After such a strong non-conference season, what's been behind the team's recent inconsistencies? Yeah, Carson, I, I think it has a lot to do with some of the guys, Remy Martin, Rob Edwards, starting to reintegrate back in the lineup. And it's kind of like last year when Kamani Lawrence was out and Mickey Mitchell was out those first couple games. ASU got off to the undefeated start. They were comfortable playing a limited rotation. And the, the word was always, when we get these guys back, we're going to be really good. But now it, it just seems like it's more chemistry problems at the moment. And a lot of guys are struggling. A lot of guys are seemingly forcing their shots. And it's caused the offense to be out of the sink. It's in contributed to a lot of these slow starts these past two games. Some guys, Lou Dor, Kamani Lawrence, they've struggled to hit the ground running after such strong starts. What will it take for them to get back on the right track? Yeah, I think specifically with Lou Dort coming into the season, a lot of people saw his body and a lot of people weren't prepared for it when he was going to the rim and starting off and having a lot of those really good games in the beginning of the season. And now that a lot of teams know about him and can game plan for him, they can start to crowd the paint and make him shoot from the perimeter. And that started to make him uncomfortable. And when he gets in the paint, he maybe doesn't have that awareness yet to know when or not when to take a shot and when not to. And as for Kamani Lawrence, he had that really hot start to the year, shot the three ball really well, had 22 points against Mississippi State. I think for him, too, he's kind of forcing things. And you have to look back to the game against Colorado last week. He has to get more back to that approach of just staying on the perimeter, kind of working within the offense and having the game come to him, most importantly. This week, the Sun Devils return to Wells Fargo Arena for a, ho for a homestand against the Oregon schools. How important is this week for the season's outlook. Yeah, I think it's crucial because now the team is sub 80 in the NCAA tournament rank in the NCAA net rankings and that doesn't bode well for NCAA tournament hopes and now that Utah State that win they had in Las Vegas, they're kind of struggling. That win might not be a quadrant one win for ASU anymore. So they're going to have to hold on and try to put it together in some of these games. And mentally, that, be, that can be tough because the Pac-12 isn't the best conference this year, but they have to get back to playing within themselves and focusing on what ca they can do rather than opposed to all that outside noise. ASU will look to change its fortunes against the Beavers and Ducks starting Thursday. Thanks as always, Trevor. Now, let's go back to Ethan with the latest on Sun Devils playing professionally. Fear the beard. ASU alum James Harden has been the most dominant player in the NBA since early December. That makes the Houston Rocket our pitchfork in the pros this week. Harden has had 17 consecutive games of scoring 30 points or more after pouring on 57 points against the Memphis Grizzlies on Monday night. This mark is the most since the NBA-ABA merger in 1976. Harden is the current frontrunner to win the league MVP for the second straight season. ASU women's basketball is over 500, five games into Pac-12 play so far. After a split with the Bay Area schools at home, the Sun Devils remain at number 19 in this week's AP poll. Joining me now is Alex Weiner to break down the women's conference start and take a closer look at what happened against ranked teams in Stanford and Cal last weekend. Alex, thanks for coming on the show today. Thank you so much. I had to dust off the suit, but I'm ready to go. <laughs> well, we're happy to have you on today. And to dive right into things, ASU had three games against top 10 opponents that all resulted in close losses this season, Baylor, Louisville, and Stanford. Mm -hmm. So how can ASU improve its game to be able to close out these elite opponents? Well, it has to come from the offensive side of the ball because defensively, even this past weekend against Stanford, they looked pretty good for most of the game. They had their fair share of lapses, but for the most part, the defense, they held Stanford well be below their season average. The problem is on offense, the consistency just isn't there. Their top scorer, Keanu Ibis, is... He has huge games like she did against Cal this weekend, but she was pretty invisible in the game against Stanford. So that comes with moving the ball, setting better screens is what Coach Charlie Turner Thorne said, and just getting the shots that they want because right now they're forcing up a lot of shots and the offense just isn't clicking the way it should be. 
Well, now the road doesn't get any easier this weekend. The Sun Devils travel north to mm -hmm. face the Oregon schools. So what should the goal be for Charlie Turner Thorns and her team in these two tough contests? Well, you'd love to say win both, but I mean, Oregon is the top scoring team in the entire country. Oregon State, 10th best team in the country. I think realistically they can split. I'm not sure that they have much of a, I think they have a chance, but not much of a chance against Oregon. That team is just clicking on all cylinders. They annihilated USC in their last game, or two games ago, and so Oregon's going to be a tough challenge. Oregon State, I think, is beatable. They don't have that inside threat, um, Marie Gulich, that they had last season. And um, if their threes aren't falling the way that they have been this season, I think ASU can take advantage of that and uh, take out Oregon State. Definitely. And you mentioned it. Oregon is a tough squad. The Sun Devils got to go on the road to face them. So as they, tr as they travel north and in this looking further into this Oregon matchup, What's the best chance ASU has at slowing down the best offense in the country? It's going to be really tough, but uh, ultimately they have to control the rebounds because if you let Oregon get multiple shots off, they're going to kill you. And it's just, that's just how it is. They have a great center in Ruthie Hebert, and if you let her kind of control the paint, grab the rebounds, these, guys, these girls, if you let them get two or three shots, they're going to put it in. Sabrina Ionescu is maybe the best player in the country. Okay. Um, Corzola is terrific also as a guard. And so you got to try your best to contest, but ultimately you got to get the rebounds if they miss their shots because they're going to get their shots up. They're just that good. Well, we'll see how it all shakes out. Awesome stuff, Alex. You can keep up with his work and the rest of the women's basketball team coverage at devilsindetail.com. Kiana Ibis is our Devils in Detail Athlete of the Week. After a slow night against the nationally ranked Stanford, Ibis went off the game next. Her, her 26 points were a team high in ASU's 62-61 win over Cal. Over the entire season, Ibis is averaging 12 points and 6 rebounds per game. Now, let's move on from the, from the hardwood to the gridiron as I am joined by Ethan once again. And now, we're going to talk some ASU football. And ASU finished Herm Edwards' first year 7-6, and six, lost the Vegas Bowl, but they did sign a pretty good class, 17 recruits in the early signing period. What were your original takeaways from this early signing period? Well, it was an early signing period, and it was Herm Edwards' first full recruiting cycle, so he's able to be hands-on, really dive into dissecting who he wants to come join his squad, and the coaching staff went to work put in a quality performance by reeling in a top 30 recruiting class, pretty strong for the Sun Devils considering. And it's actually highlighted by a trio of quarterbacks and Joey Yellen, Ethan Long, and Jaden Daniels. And it's gonna be it's gonna be tight and spring ball as there's gonna be realistically four quarterbacks competing for that starting job along with Dylan Sterling Cole. So Carson, who do you think could come out on top as the the starting signal caller for ASU after spring ball. You know, it's a little hard to say at this point. I mean, we haven't seen a whole lot of any of them. Dylan Sterling Cole has had a few starts in his career for Manny Wilkins because he was injured in a couple games his sophomore yeah. season. He came in a couple times. Manny Wilkins was shaking up a couple plays here and there, but not mm -hmm. much. We haven't seen a whole lot, and he hasn't been, to be 100% frank, he hasn't been uh, he hasn't been brilliant in any of his time. He's kind of looked inconsistent. A few good balls, but a lot of picks, a lot of bad throws. And I honestly think Jaden Daniels, the number two dual threat quarterback prospect in the nation, I think he will be the starter in the opening game next year. Well, Jaden Daniels definitely looking like somebody that could come on and, and start right away. Yeah, he, yeah. Was, he was terrific in the under – Armor All-American Bowl. Yep. He was fantastic. He threw a couple touchdown passes, some nice throws. And now building off of that, let's move on from football. Let's dive right into softball as we are just weeks away from the start of the 2019 season. And head coach Trisha Ford and ASU picked up another player, pitcher Samantha Mejia. She is a Fresno State transfer and a much-needed piece following G. Juarez's transfer. In 22.2 innings last year, she posted an ERA of .93 and a 3-0 record. Mejia joins a pitching staff of Cielo Mesa, Michaela Santa Cruz, and Abby Anderson. Thanks, Carson. Sun Devil Hockey has had its best season ever as a program so far. If the 2019 NCAA tournament started today, ASU would be in for the first time in history. Reporter Chase Dryberg is here to discuss the latest on the team with just four series left in the regular season. Glad to have you on today, Chase. Thank you for having me, Ethan. Well, jumping right into things, this ASU team was rolling with a 6-1-1 and one and one stretch, 
but it hit a wall against Cornell this past weekend on the road. Can you explain what happened to the Sun Devils in New York? Yeah, they just ran into a really hot team in Cornell, and at the end of the day, they didn't play the kind of game that they've been playing all season long where they found success. You know, they, they weren't sticking to the fundamentals like we've talked about all season long. They were really having a lot of problems in their own end, turning pucks over. And also, Joey Decord just wasn't as good as he usually is. And like Greg Powers has said, this team will only go as far as Joey Decord can take them. You know, yes, he did have a very good showing that second night with a lot of saves, but he was still shaky when it counted. And, you know, the, he's such a big part of this team that he needs to be sound from, you know, the first minute to the last. Well, despite a 6-1 to one loss on Friday, Joey Decord still registered 45 saves. And it was a tough series all around for ASU. However, Johnny Walker was able to net yet another goal to extend his total to 19 on the season. That leads the NCAA. So the sophomore... How has he been able to have such a knack for finding the back of the net this season? Yeah, Johnny Walker's a very unique player, and you know you don't find many of him in the NCAA or even hockey for that matter. You know he's not the greatest skater out there, but he just has a really good knack for finding the back of the net. You know, especially on that power play that we've seen so many times this year. From that left-hand circle, he's just electric, especially oh, yeah. with that one-timer. So he's a very unique player in, in, with that in mind, and he's just. Very good knack for finding the back of the net, being the right place at the right time, being able to bang in rebounds. Um, so he's a very big part of this team that they're really going to need down the stretch. Walker has nine power play goals this year, but finally, Chase, the Sun Devils have a bye this week. So what do you think the team is going to have to improve on as they get the week off and get ready for this final stretch with four series left? They just got to get back to what they've been doing all season long, and that's sticking to the fundamentals like we've talked about. You know, they've got to get the pucks in deep all game long, own puck possession like they've done so much this year. And again, Joey Decord, he's going to have to be really good for this team. You know, they've, they're playing a few good teams coming up with Boston University and Minnesota yeah. on that schedule. Even RIT is not, not a team that they should be sleeping on. So Joey Decord is going to have to be really good, and everyone's going to have to play their part in being able to really buy into this team model of getting to the NCAA tournament bid. And if they can play like they have in this first half of the season, I think Arizona State's going to have their first ever NCAA tournament bid. Some great analysis from Chase Dryberg. Thanks for coming on today. You can keep up with all of the latest on ASU Hockey at devilsindetail.com. And that's a wrap for today. Thanks for tuning in to the first of many great shows this year. We look forward to having you back. And until next time, check out devilsindetail.com and follow us on Twitter at devils underscore detail.